All right, so you just need to understand when you buy a certificate in the state of Colorado that they might have a flexible rate, okay? All right, here's what else you need to understand. If you're seeking answers to clarity regarding Colorado tax lien sales, you know, you're in the right place. Because today, Ted Thomas, America's tax lien and tax deed authority, will be addressing your most frequently asked questions that he has been asked all over Ted's social media. Hi, Ted, how are you today? I'm great, all's well. Okay, great, why don't we just jump into it right now. I've got Sergio from YouTube. I'm curious to know if this state offers tax lien certificates or tax deed sales. Okay, well, Colorado offers a tax lien certificate. So uh, Colorado's uh, naturally a, a, a beautiful place. For anybody that's been there knows about all the beautiful mountains and they go up to Pikes Peak and whatever. But I'm gonna talk about the different rates of return in Colorado and how different municipalities and different, different counties can sell properties, but we'll get into that. So back to you with your questions. Okay, terrific, thanks, Ted. I've got Jackson from TikTok, and he's asking, if I purchase a tax lien certificate in Colorado, how long until I can foreclose on that property? Okay, so you're asking a question about how long before you're, you're gonna be the owner of that property. When you buy the certificate at the auction, that starts a clock running. Think about 60 minutes on television. Got a clock going tick, tick, tick like this. So that clock can go day after day after day. It can go for three years before any pro before you can even dream about getting this property. So what you do, when you buy a tax certificate, you buy a tax certificate, which is nothing more than a piece of paper. That's all you're gonna get. You're gonna take it home, you're gonna put it on your desk. It's a passive investment. You just sit on your rusty dusty and you wait. All right, now, you have no rights to go to that property. You have no rights to try and collect rent. You have no right to go fix the property. You have no right to do anything but sit on your rusty dusty. It's a passive investment for the whole time that the defaulted property owner is in default. So if they stay in default past the three years, then you're gonna be able to do that. But they have a right of redemption for three long years. That's a long time. Now, I'm gonna tell you, if you'll check with the county, they'll tell you 95 or 97% of these certificates are ultimately going to pay you because during three years, people got a lot of time to recover. Now, maybe they got a divorce, maybe they had a wrecked car, maybe they had a hurricane, whatever. In three years, people have time to recover. So you're probably going to get paid. Now, I've got one here. Her name is Ashley and she's on Twitter and she's asking what type of bidding method is used to purchase tax liens in Colorado, Ted? Now, usually when you go to an auction, you're going to bid higher, higher, higher. That's what happens at most auctions. Tax lien auctions, with the exception of Colorado, tax lien auctions, people are using, usually are bidding interest rates down. So in Colorado, they're actually bidding the price of the property and they're bidding it up. So you gotta be careful that you don't overbid. If you overbid in Colorado, your overbid amount will just be accepted by the county and they'll keep the money. But you're not gonna earn any interest on it. So let me repeat what I said for clarity. In Colorado, they're gonna bid up. Be careful that you don't overbid because if you overbid, what's gonna happen is that money will not pay you interest. The county will just take the money and they'll keep it. That means that's a restriction. You need to know what you're doing in Colorado. Serena from YouTube is asking, I read that Colorado can change the interest rate on a certificate each year. Is that even legal? Generally speaking, when you buy a certificate, the interest rate's gonna be whatever you bought on the certificate. If Colorado decides to change that rule, they can do any rule they want. It's the government. They can do what they want. So read the rules, and if it says they can do that, then you're gonna have to live with that. Now, why would the interest rate go up and down? So this is a complex problem for people that are buying in other states or first-time buyers. Colorado charges 9% above a Fed fund rate. Let me say it again, 9% above a Fed funds rate. So the Fed funds, are determined in Washington, D.C. 
not in Colorado. 3%, 3% comes into the state and then they add 9%, 9% on top of that. So that's how they figure the rate. But what if the Fed funds rates were now 5%, then they're gonna add nine onto that. It's a complex thing. All right, so you just need to understand when you buy a certificate in the state of Colorado, that they might have a flexible rate, okay? All right, here's what else you need to understand. You'll see a picture of all the counties in Colorado. And when you see those counties in Colorado, which they're numerous, there's a lot of counties, each county throughout the United States is its own taxing district. All right, so if you put Colorado up and just talk about Colorado, the different counties can have different rates. So the county is a taxing district, and then sometimes within a county, they can have a township or a municipality, again, another taxing district. Now, I'm not trying to blow your mind with what's going on, but we start out with the large, meaning the whole United States, then that's narrowed down to a state. Today, we're talking about Colorado. So people are saying, how do I buy tax liens in Colorado? You buy a tax lien in Colorado, depending upon which county that you're in. So if you happen to be in Jefferson County or Polk County, you have to follow the rules of that county. You could have 30 different rates within the same state. So you need to read the rules for your county. Let me say it all over again. Wherever you're buying, you need to read the rules. The point is, all I can do is teach you the overall of what's going on. When you get there, you need to get out the rules and you're gonna to have to get out the rules and they're gonna be a, there's gonna be a, a thick document like I'm holding up, there's a thick document and you're gonna to have to read it, but one or two pages is gonna explain all the details, what the rate is. So when they say the rate's 9%, it's 9% above a Fed fund rate. All right, I don't know what the Fed fund rate is gonna be unless I call Washington DC. So you'll just have to live with whatever it is. So they say it's 9% plus a 4% or a 2%. It could change. That's why things could change in Colorado. Is it complex? Sounds that way the first time you hear it, but it's just a system they devised and we learned to live with it. Travis from Facebook is asking, Ted, I want to participate in the tax lien auction in Colorado this year. When do their auctions take place? Okay, great. We appreciate you guys watching, but I can't always give you the exact dates that's going to happen. I'm going to give you a date known today, but could that date change? Absolutely. Government changes the rules all the time. Generally speaking, at the time we're making this video, they're doing their auctions in the month of November. Now, you watch the video, it could change. It could be a different month. Hey, Ted, I got Derek from Instagram, and he's asking, how are tax lien certificates auctioned in Colorado? Is it an online auction or is it an in-person auction? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what's happening today is there's lots of change going on. So whatever information I give you, it's as of that day, things change. Okay, they do online and offline auctions in, in Colorado. Generally speaking, uh, people like to go to the offline auctions because they go there and it's exciting and whatever. Uh, the online auction is always done through a, usually a provider that provides online auction material. You need to check and see the county that you're gonna go to what they're doing. The market's changing. It will always be continuing to change. So the only way you're always going to know what to do is check on the county where you want to go and you'll get the exact answer. Okay, thanks. I've got Alex from YouTube, Ted, and he says, look, besides looking at the property, what other due diligence should I be doing before investing in a tax lien certificate? All right. Now, when you talk about these auctions, People have the idea that the auction is always a great deal. I'm gonna tell you, an auction isn't always a great deal. All right, so if you go and check on a property, you might find out it's deteriorated and it would cost you a lot of money to either tear it down or to fix it up. So you might not want it, all right? There's a lot of other things to check. For example, if you're gonna go and check a property, which I'm a big advocate of, always check the property. Look around, what do you see? For example, it might be a nice property, but what if it's in a bad area? So you wanna check the neighborhood. People buy neighborhoods. Now, if you're buying a tax lien certificate, let's keep in mind, all tax lien certificates don't pay off. If they don't pay off, you're gonna end up with that property. What are you gonna do with it? So you need to think in terms of what is your exit strategy. So the two critical items when you're in the tax defaulted business are number one, look at the property. 
Number two, what will that property sell for or exit strategy? What is your exit strategy going to be? So if you say to yourself, I can only sell it for $100,000, but it's going to cost you $90,000, you wouldn't want to buy it. There's not enough margin in there. However, if it was a, could sell for $100,000 and you could buy it for $20,000, now you get a huge margin. You, what you're doing is you're getting in a business that's got margin. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for the margin between buying and selling. In other words, you're like a trader. You're trying to buy it right so you can sell it right and make money. Okay, terrific. You know, Ted, it would be nice to have a calendar of all these auctions, where they're happening, when they're yeah. happening. Yeah. And, you know, your students know how to find this information. So, folks, if you want a taste of the potential for this business, click the link below this video and request your free calendar of upcoming tax delinquent property auctions. Don't forget, click on like, subscribe and ask questions in this comment section and Ted's research team will definitely get back to you with the answers. Ted, it's been a wonderful time with you. Thanks for all your fabulous information and we look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you.